Today we'll be talking about financing for transboundary waters from the perspective of the World Bank. Today we'll be covering three topics. The first, about the World Bank. The second, the overview of World Bank transboundary waters programs. And finally, I'll give you some examples from the Nile Basin. To begin, the World Bank began as the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development following World War II as a way to reconstruct Europe. Now, the World Bank Group is a global cooperative with 189 member countries based in 127 country offices with over 15,000 staff. This includes five institutions working for sustainable solutions that reduce poverty and work towards shared prosperity in developing countries. IDA and IBRD are the concessional lending arms and grant windows of the World Bank, and they will be my focus today. In addition, IFC and MEGA provide debt, equity, and guarantees to the private sector. Our concessional financing is provided to our member clients around the world. In fiscal year 18, we delivered over $47 billion in projects, and about 14% of this was for water supply and sanitation activities, including support to transboundary water activities. It's important to note that our principal client is the client governments, our member countries, so we do not loan to individuals or other organizations. Our principal inter interlocutor is the Ministry of Finance, and through the Ministries of Finance, we then work with Ministries of Water, Ministries of Foreign Affairs, and others who are active in the transboundary water space. I sit in the World Bank Global Practice. With over 300 staff, our bank's water practice is the largest public financier of water globally. We have an active portfolio of 29 billion and 167 projects under implementation around the world. About half of these deal with water resources and some of them deal with transboundary waters. The World Bank has a long history of support to transboundary water basin programs, beginning with the Indus Waters Treaty when we helped the governments of India and Pakistan as they were negotiating their treaty. At, since we've expanded into a great number of basins, including the basins listed here on this slide. We have um, a, a fair amount of our transboundary waters work is funded through regional trust funds, which are made up of a selection of our member governments who contribute to these trust funds for extra additional work in addition to our lending activities. This includes the Siwa Trust Fund for Africa, the Sawi Trust Fund for South Asia, the Kodip Trust Fund for Central Asia, and the Danube Water Program for the Danube, as well as a program in the Mekong. Our support is um, varies uh, across a wide range of types of support. For instance, we support information services in a number of transboundary basins, either directly to countries or through regional organizations to help the client countries better understand their water resources. We also help them to identify shared risks and opportunity and um, promote information sharing and dialogue among countries. We also support transboundary water institutions, some of them from creation and some of them to um, increase their strength um, and their legitimacy and their effectiveness in dealing with transboundary waters issues. And finally, where the enabling environment exists for um, joint investments, we help countries to study and to identify and eventually implement transboundary waters investments. Sometimes these are softer investments around things like flood preparedness and early warning, and sometimes it's harder infrastructure investments such as flood control, watershed management investments, um, or, or multi-purpose investments. Um, to give you three examples from the Nile Basin of the types of support we've, we often give in transboundary waters, um, the first is an example of the institutional support. In the Nile Basin, we help the countries um, create and um, grow a transitional river basin organization called the Nile Basin Initiative. We help the countries work together to uh, agree on a shared vision for their, the initiative to achieve soci sustainable socioeconomic development through equitable utilization of and benefit from the common Nile Basin resource. We help the countries to design the structure of this organization, including a secretariat for the entire basin based in Entebbe, and two sub-basin organizations called the Eastern Nile Subsidiary Action Program and the Nile Equatorial Lake Subsidiary Action Program. 
and we've helped them with the range of transboundary water activities that I described on the last slide, including exchange of information and data, joint modeling, capacity building, and investment preparation. The second example from the Nile Basin is where we actually help the countries prepare a transboundary physical investment called the Regional Resumo Falls Hydroelectric Project. This project spans the border of Rwanda and, and Tanzania um, and sits just downstream of the border with Burundi. We help the governments um, study the investment to decide on the type of investment that would be situated there, a run a river hydroelectric plant, and to do uh, environmental social impact assessments as well as designs of the site. And we're now uh, financing the construction of the hydroelectric plant. Um, through our involvement, we also leveraged financing from other for other associated investments, including funding for transmission lines from the project, um, which are being funded by the African Development Bank. Now, it's important to notice this, this um, Resumo Falls hydroelectric plant in some ways is the quintessential transboundary investment, as it's an investment that actually spans the borders of multiple countries. It's important to note that not all transboundary waters investments actually span the border. In some cases, the transboundary investments can either be upstream or downstream of a transboundary neighbor. And the third category of, of or example I want to show you from the Nile region fits in this category. The Nelsap CU office of the Nile Basin Initiative had worked with the Nile countries to identify a portfolio of investments that were of great transboundary significance. They were investments that either could be improved by preparing them under a transboundary setting um, or that needed to be prepared in a transboundary setting because of upstream or downstream water use concerns. Um, now SAP CU had worked with its member countries to identify a portfolio of investment projects, which far exceeded the amount of budget that was available from the World Bank or other similar financiers to fund. Because of this, NELSAP CU requested assistance from the World Bank to look at and identify other sources of financing, including which of these investments could possibly be financed through public partner private partnerships. Because of this request, the World Bank came in. Um, and helped NELSAP CU in a capacity building effort to help it and its member governments look at and screen the portfolio um, based on a number of, of criteria to identify which possible projects may be appealing to the private sector for financing. Um, through this initiative, two projects were identified, but more importantly, the involved governments, including ministries of finance, water, and um, energy, uh, developed additional capacity in understanding what makes a project um, appealing to the private sector to attract private sector financing.